Get it in there. Let's do it. Let's go for it. Ah, the challenges of a young civilization. It's hard keeping up with the neighbors when they have the wheel and you don't. Humankind learns quickly that everyone contributes. If you're terrified of wild animals, you can grow lentils or catch fish. Tribes settle towns. Towns develop markets, and markets begin the exchange of goods, services, and most important, rumors and hearsay. Perhaps you don't really need to focus on markets when you have deep philosophers and dangerous chariots. That's right. <laughs> I love that perspective. Big fan. Big fan from way back. Before placing your first city, let's study the terrain. Use this button to show the grid. Okay. Well, that's one of the, yeah, I usually keep that one on. This grid shows the natural resources. Yep. Play with or without. Um, very useful for organizing your cities and maximizing their production. This will be in, come in handy for determining where to found your next city. Try to find a place where there is a lot of food and industry. Yep. Matter of diplomacy. What if your empire has now reached the Harapans? Harapans. Culture chosen. Actually, how do you pronounce that culture and civilization? The nomadic tribe reached the ancient era with the Hittites. Wait, who did? Oh, no. <laughs> is that more militaristic? I have concerns. You were not allowed to trespass onto territories that had been attached to one of a foreign empire's cities. If one of your armies finds itself in such a situation, then you'll have to order them to move outside this empire's attached territories. Your army will take damage each turn from attrition until it manages to leave. These rules change if you're at war with an empire or have signed an open borders treaty with them. Oh. Oh. Oh, is it because we're in the ancient era? Greetings, Sovereign. Hello. Do you too believe that there is no limit to how high humanity might soar. Is this ancient Edgar Allan Poe? <laughs> is this a Pictish Edgar Allan Poe? That's amazing. <laughs> That's awesome. Welcome to Humankind's Diplomacy Screen. This is where you will manage all diplomatic relations with foreign empires. As one of those gameplay systems which might seem complex at first, bear in mind that it takes everyone a few games to understand and master its subtleties. Be the leader you want to be. Find allies, trade resources, sign treaties, or declare wars. Let's take a quick tour of diplomacy, key indicators, and interaction tabs. First things first, headlining the diplomacy screen is your diplomatic relations state. Each empire has a relationship with every other empire in the game, and this relationship is defined to a great extent by its current relations state. Hover over your current diplomatic relations state to view what diplomatic abilities are available in this state and which are not. Alright, so we're at peace. So that's why it's attrition for trespass. Trespass. First things first. We're gonna get through this. We're, the dip, we're at the diplomatic tutorial, okay? Headlining the diplomacy screen. Oh yeah, we already read that one. Uh, and this was what now? Both empires are at peace. Attacks within each other's empire borders are strictly forbidden. Skirmishes in neutral territory may not immediately lead to war. No new trade exchanges can be set up by either empire. Existing trade routes are unaffected. Armies are unable to enter territories attached to the other empire's cities. Exchange of ideas and beliefs between empires is limited. Oh, so this is like merely peace. Both empires accept the other's ambassador, revealing the position of their capital city. Okay. War support. Now, I think I know how this one works. War, this, and this is also a really, really, really cool feature. War support represents your population's animosity against a specific empire. It is the fuel for war. Your people's morale will be broken if you run out, and they will force you to agree to surrender. The will of the people. So, more on war support and its role in surrender terms if and when you declare war. 
Relations tab is the default tab when opening the diplomacy screen. Here you can use diplomatic abilities such as surprise war or propose alliance. These abilities evolve following your diplomatic relations state. Also, you can view each empire's relations next to their avatars. Okay, so this war support thing uh, is something that helps determine how the whether or not you can declare war, but also when you are forced to accept conditions for victory or defeat. At least forced to accept conditions of defeat. Um, I don't know if you're, you can ever be like forced to accept conditions of victory. Actually, no, I think you can, but it's just, it's based on the, the other one. So these two things, these two bars that are population war support for each of the, that's between you, your civilization and another one, and presumably between theirs and others as well, like they have their own. Um, if our war support is at max, we can keep going with war and my whole population is like hell yeah this is awesome we love it just keep going keep doing this war thing just do it for decades do it for centuries do it for millennia we don't care just keep going it's great love war big fan and you get to keep this up by having things like i don't know exactly how that works but like uh, if you are achieving victories in war these are the kinds of things where if the benefit of war is positive your people are happy about it. Maybe, broadly speaking, that, that sounds about right. Now, if you're losing and or have other negative effects that are happening due to the war, population support will start to go down. And it's not just like your power. You might, I don't know, you might have like a really powerful army, but you just keep getting absolutely destroyed in battle you keep throwing your you keep throwing your battles your people might be like we're not fans of this like we keep feeding into your whole war effort thing and we're not winning this thing even though you have this immense power immensely powerful army you're still not so we're not fans of this so it's going to start ticking down on your side or their side whatever when it gets to a certain point it mandates defeat and victory Oh my god, my monitor almost fell right down on my face. Why though? I wasn't even, I was talking, I wasn't even playing the game. So anyway, what I was, as I was saying, once this gets down to zero, your population is basically going to force you to surrender. And when, like, surrender or defeat happens, I think depending on how low the support, how low or high the support bar is, uh, the, war, the war support bar, the... Uh, I think that affects the conditions that you are forced to accept, right? So, like, if my if my war bar gets to zero, and I'm like, okay, fine, finally gonna accept defeat now, uh, and their war bar is like all the way at the top, they can force me to give them a bunch of money and maybe give up a territory. I don't know, give them some units, whatever. They can force me into certain defeat conditions. Um, so if I surrender earlier. You know, I still maybe have the support of the people, but I'm like, I'm just done with this war. We're just going to go ahead and accept defeat. I mean, we're not going to be able to negotiate with them for some reason. We're just going to accept defeat. They can only force us to do a couple of things, right? They, they might be able to go like, eh, give us like 50 gold and we'll call it even. You know, because if they're like, give us this territory and these units and all this gold and teach us this, this, this technology, this science research that you figured out. If I've got all this war support... I easily get to go like, uh, no, we're going to keep fighting you. But if I have no war support, I literally can't keep fighting and am therefore forced to accept the conditions that they put before me. And I think it's a really cool setup. Treaties. Ooh, treaties are additional accords added on top of a state of peace or alliance. Adding or removing one or more diplomatic abilities on both sides of the relationship of the relation. By default, you start on the left column of treaties and will progressively work your way to the right if you decide to deepen your ties with the empire you are dealing with. We will cover more treaties. We will cover treaties in more detail soon. Work your way progressively to the right if you decide to deepen your ties with the empire you're dealing with. Politely refuse this pr proposition. Now is not the time for such things. Your proposal is too much of a ball and chain on my ambitions.
And Fine. I'm broke. If that is your choice. And I'm broke. Lists all grievances occurring between the two empires. You can make demands. Oh, yeah, this is also a really dope feature. So, like, if they came by and, like, pillaged one of my uh, resources or a, an outpost or destroyed one of my armies somewhere, uh, the grief, or, or if I did this to them, we kind of build up a list of grievances, right? Like, th like actions that have been taken that are disliked by the opposing group um and that is then s uh something that i think that you can use either to well actually i think where this particularly comes into play is in justification for war a just creating a just war or not um so if they've if i haven't done anything to them and they've come through and pillaged two of my spots and destroyed one of my uh, units in a skirmish, I could have like a series of things that are listed under the uh, grievances. And then I can go, I demand that you pay me 400 gold for all this havoc you've wreaked. And if they say no, then I get to go like, ah, you know what? You've caused all these, these things, these bad things to happen, and you refuse to pay up for these crimes you've committed, we're going to war. That's how it works. Them's the rules. I mean, I don't have to do that, but that's like, it sets up conditions for, for, for doing it, right? And that, uh, to me, like, this is one of those really cool things that gets a lot more nuanced than something like Civ. I'm, I'm super amped to, to, to get this stuff to play out. Onward to a new era. A major step for you and your civilization. The rules for earning fame have changed now that you've left the Neolithic era. The empire with the most fame will win the game, so it's important to know how to earn it. You can enter the empire screen to see your current objectives. Era stars are era-specific objectives that earn you fame. You need to obtain at least seven era stars to unlock the option to progress to the next era. All right, so just seven in total from any of the, any of the, and we're 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 esthetes. Science to surprise war. Military forces, those are mine. Again, it's very easy to find. Let me take these off and this. Let's just look at pretty terrain. The science? This music is great. Available technologies. No technology selected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Empire research is also nothing. <laughs> awesome. Uh, do I have a way to turn this into a city? God, I hope so. How do I go for calendar first? This seems like a good starting standard. Uh, domestication. Ooh, domesticate horses. Uh, which one is uh, technology screen? Okay, cool. I imagine that calendar is going to get us to being able to get the, um, what's this resource? Copper. Okay, so we need copper and horses. I think I made a great choice in selecting our civilization our, our culture you are now ready to build your first city the capital of your empire select the outpost you wish to grow into a city then select evolve city yeah yeah cost influence all right so i've got 10. take some time to determine the most strategic site in particular pay attention to the resource production of nearby tiles and the cultural protection offered by terrain yeah oh not cultural protection natural protection offered by the terrain yeah got it yeah, mm, outpost relocation. That, that's just straight up cost 11. Oh, oh wait, did I just do it? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, is it just, is it just? I may have made a misstep. You know what? There's no, no, perfection is the, is the enemy of just getting stuff done. You have just met another empire. Will they become friend or foe? Oh, they're definitely... Well, they're friendly for now. And your relations through diplomacy. Paramount to the development of your empire, enabling you to strengthen ties and ensure mutual cooperation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, God, that looks so pretty and good. Choices you make in civic... Oh, this is a civics thing? Society. Zero territory in your empire's sphere of influence. Excuse me? 
Income, buy per turn. Okay, good. The average stability of all of your cities strained at 81%. Enactable civics. Show civic. Cannot be done without any civic unlocked. Oh, oh. Okay, well, listen. Don't judge me. 